Hi there, still in Abu Ghraini here. Just remember that hypotheses are just flashed through. On the exam paper, you often have to write in the hypotheses. So that hypotheses again, sediment will become smaller and more rounded the greater the distance from the source of the river. In the upper course of the river, you can see square or rectangular pieces of rock which have broken away from the bedrock of the ground. This means that most of the sediment carried by the river is rectangular or square. We are now in the middle course of the river. You see the river is wider. We would expect sediment to be more rounded and we would expect it to be shorter and smaller. Hello there. As these rocks have become more rounded, this is because of attrition, as they have gone further and further down the river. Attrition is where these rocks have been fitting together, causing round edges to fall. Right, another form of erosion is abrasion. <laughs> this is where rocks get more rounded and smaller from hitting against the sides of the bank. They also bang against the river bed. Right, back to the dodgy sofa in Abergavenny. You often get questions on exam papers which ask you about risks. This one here reads, How did you respond to risk associated with undertaking your primary data collection? Let's have a look at how we addressed this when we were on the field trip. Robbie, what are the risks associated with this bit of field work? At this point in the field work, the main risk would be slipping and falling. But luckily, I'm wearing the right footwear. Another risk of this field work is carrying equipment such as this rain pole because it may hit something. If you're not careful where you're looking and carrying it. Okay, another risk is the risk carried by the water itself, like vials disease. So it's very important that you take clean water and you also take antibacterial wipes or antibacterial gel so you can clean your hands before eating food. And for your trips, it's important to know which students might have health problems, so you carry medication with you and you also carry a first aid kit for general use. As you can see, today is a glorious day in Wales. However, most days aren't, and it's important that you are wearing appropriate clothing, waterproof and warm clothing, when you're undertaking field work. When planning field work, it's important to think about access. This part of the river at the upper course is easily accessible by road. We're currently at the site of our middle course part of the survey and as you can see again we're in a car park with easy access down to the river. A bit of a slippy path but very easy um, access. Pebble number one. You 
can either do them as you go along, so every time you put your ruler in, take a depth measurement, take a pebble at that point and do the measurement, or you can line them up along the side in order until you've got your ten and then do them all at the end. What you want to do with your pebble is your length, so your longest axis, measure that, measure your width, and then turn it and measure your depth. Okay? Those are your three measurements, then you need to look at how round your thickness is. So if you look at your chart, you've got, you need to look at your chart, and I'm going to ask you what, what this one is. So on your river bed load, you've got three, um, four numbers, one, two, three, four, so how angular you think this pebble is. This one, one, one more angular, one more with a bit of spicy at least. Guys, what are we going for? Three down there, two. It is quite rounded, so it's still got some bits coming off of there, but it is quite rounded. I'll probably go with a two on that one. Two or three. Two or three. Okay, so you can either line them up along the side. If you line them up, it's quite nice to take a picture. On the board here you can see bullet points which show us the methods we use to collect our primary data. The first thing we did was select a suitable site. We then measured across the river. We divided the width of it by 10 and every 10th percentile we picked up a stone or a piece of sediment. We measured the width, length and depth of the stone and then we recorded its roundness. We repeated this process in the upper, middle and lower course of the river. ICT can be really useful in planning out field work. Some exam questions have asked you how it can be useful. One way is using Google Maps or Google Earth to plan out suitable places to undertake your field work investigation. Back to the dodgy sofa and Abergavenny. The methods we used were straightforward and gave us a good sample of different stages of the river. However, as we're now going to find out, there are some weaknesses with the methods we used. To avoid the results being subjective, it's important that each member of the team is involved in deciding whether the stones are angular and rounded. This will make clearer and more accurate results. Tell me a weakness of this survey at this point of the river. Um, there's like no rocks at this part of the river, so it's hard to find them. James, can you hold that rock up? Okay, James is given another weakness in this in this field work. This weakness is that uh, there's often a caveman instinct to pull out the biggest rock in the river. You could argue that accuracy is another weakness to this method. As you can see, the tape measure is bouncing up and down. Does this mean they're accurately measuring at each tenth percentile? Another weakness is abnormalities in your data. These could make your dispersion graph look inaccurate and make you come to inaccurate conclusions. In the middle course of the river, you'd probably expect the stones to be more rounded and less angular and perhaps smaller than they are at this point here. The reason why well, we could have an abnormality in our results from this survey today is because a lot of the stones here were deposited by glaciation. When the glaciers melted at the end of the last ice age, there was big rivers of water coming down the hill. These big rivers of water were capable of carrying mm. large sediment, which has been left here for a long period of time. As the river erodes away, more deposited glacial till is added to the riverbed. Just to remind you of the presentation techniques we use to display our information on length of stones and roundness. One method is using a dispersion graph. On this you can plot the upper course, middle course and lower course along the x-axis. On the y-axis you can mark the length in centimetres of the stones. You can use a key to show the angular or circular nature of the stones. The advantage of this method was it was simple. One of the disadvantages was that it didn't show the measurements we took for depth and width. So what I want to do to start off with is to look at the results that you've produced. Okay, we'll look at these results that you guys produced before um, tea, and I want to focus on the two hypotheses that we got on the board here. So, and if we look at the results and try and say whether or not the results we got on that piece of paper prove or disprove these hypotheses. And I want some feedback from different people in the class. 
So the first hypothesis is that sediment will become more rounded as you move along the course of a river. What do our results show us with regards to hypotheses? Um, I probably have to say that it's, it's if you look at it quite broadly, then no, I don't think it has. Uh, yeah, sort of has. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we'll go with that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can anybody be a bit more specific than sort of has? Yeah. Kind of if they're defining something, not that it's wrong. Okay, so tell me the correlation, please, Liam. Um, Okay, brilliant. So the lower you go, the more rounded they get. So we're saying that this hypothesis has in our statistic, in our um, graph, on most of them, you can see clearly the colour change towards a rounded colour as we've gone down the river. However, so we pr probably have got the evidence to accept that the sediments got rounder as we go down the river. Do you think we've got the evidence to say that sediments become smaller as you go along the river? Yes. No. Bruce says yes. Someone who here says no. Matt, tell me why you say no. I've just got bigger. Has he got smaller? Okay, so Stephen, you're saying he got bigger. No, he's not. He's smaller. Yeah, but there's smaller. Okay. It was an anomaly because of the. Okay. Can we please listen to what Matt's got to say? Because he's going to pick out on abnormali abnormality that um, we, we spotted in the results. Because it was you know, like the middle course of the river. There was a lot more boulders. Than they should have been because of the um, because it was like glacier and the and the glacier would have put the boulders there instead of the river. Okay, brilliant. What did we have at the top of the river? Um, or what didn't we have on the top of the river? Particularly those people on the upper side of the waterfall, um, the upper side of the road. What was on the riverbed? Just it was just flat riverbed, wasn't it? There was hardly any sediment there, which meant any sediment you found was generally small pebbles. So the abnormality there was that things had not been deposited there, whereas there seems to be more deposition in the middle course. Therefore, a lot of you found the sediment was larger in the middle course. And we've also got the glaciation from Matt, which kind of told us that um, there was quite a bit of bigger sediment in the middle course of the river. So there were abnormalities. When you're doing the exam, you will have to talk about your results. You need to remember what your results show you. You need to be able to repeat the dispersion graphs.